nurturing your child's aspiration through education and career guidance and how we can do that. So let's begin with the end in mind. Let's look at some of the questions that may run through your mind. What do you hope to see in your child by the time he or she graduates from school? You know, the, um, just I think about um, one and a half months ago, our TPM, Mr. Taman, uh, mentioned that uh, let's, let's try not to pass on the disadvantage of one generation to the next. But we may also want to ask what are the aspirations of our child, okay? Not just about your aspiration for him or her, but what does your child want to become in the near future? So what is exactly education and career guidance to you? Okay, and this would really be the overview of my presentation. We will talk a little bit about what is education and career guidance, and henceforth, I will use the term ECG for short. And to talk a little bit about how to do it in a developmentally appropriate way, and what are some of the current provisions that's been done in school. But it's not just about uh, what the schools are doing. And definitely because this is a parent seminar, what you can also do to take the same journey to help your child in ECG. So first, what is ECG? Many words there. We'll just um, look at a few key words. Definitely, let's look at the word knowledge. There will be certain knowledge that you want to have, and this is about helping your child to gain self-knowledge, to know something about his, own, his or her own strength, interests, learning styles, and uh, how is he or she wired and would uh, thrive in a certain environment. But it's also about the knowledge of what is out there, and pretty much what Mr. Ong has covered is about gaining that knowledge of the options that's out there, the opportunities that's available to you and to your child. Okay, definitely there'll be some skills, skills about searching for information, could be in the booklet in your goodies bag, could be on MOE website, and how do you uh, be informed consumer of this information and be able to process it. And so there will be skills that your child will need as well, how to problem solve, how to even make decisions, how to weigh between school A and school B and the different types of schools and also the different learning pathways. So there are skills, and I may say there are different attitudes. I think gone are the days where you just secure a good job and that would be a career for life. In fact, now it's a flip around, expect it to be a lifetime of careers. And you know, I think recently has been reported that in a lifetime, you flip careers about six to seven times. And the younger generation normally do not stay in one job for more than two to three years. So the, the keep flipping will be there. So it's not a career for life, but in fact, it's a lifetime of many careers. And therefore, you need to embrace certain attitudes. What about the attitudes of lifelong learning? Knowing that education doesn't get done only in the school, but even as you are sitting here, you are holding a job, you know that you are constantly looking for personal development, professional development. The idea that you take ownership, uh, and hone your skills, and constantly learning. And I think that's the attitude we want our young children to have, that it's not, get, it's not going to be done only in the school system, but to look at, to embrace lifelong learning and to look at what are the opportunities out there for continual education and training. Okay, this diagram looks complicated, but what I'm going to uh, do is to navigate you through there. Um, we did say that ECG should be done in a developmentally appropriate manner. At primary school, it's pre pretty much about gaining that awareness. Okay, your child is in P5, uh, P6, uh, what is it about you know, she, he or she likes and dislikes? Um, what are some of the strengths um, that would bring to bear in terms of choice of school? And of course, in the secondary school, you need to know the options. Options of set two subject combinations that are relevant to the N and the O level, and that can prepare them for higher uh, stages of learning. And also, being aware of the many occupations that's out there. And definitely, as they are older, they begin to start uh, to do some concrete planning as they transit into the world of work. And at the bottom part, it's really about clarifying the self-identity of the child. You know, be it the kind of values, the kind of interests and abilities that the person will need to know in order to inform the choice of education options as well as possible career pathways. At the end of it all, we really hope to uh, derive certain student outcomes um, in terms of the 
circle you see there is the kind of workforce skills that is needed in the 21st century. Okay, being proactive, um, not waiting for problems to come, but being able to actually plan ahead um, and being adaptable and um, definitely being a resilient uh, worker. Okay, you uh, will be able to navigate uh, challenges that's in the work workplace. If you look at the box, the rectangle below, it is the social, social and emotional competencies that Mr. Ong talked about. So it's not just about having an education done to be ready for work. It's not just work ready, and I would like to use this term workplace ready as well. That means how to work with people, how to navigate the landscape there, how do you deal with difficult bosses. And I think, you know, probably some in the audience here will laugh how to deal with difficult bosses and difficult clients, and the whole set of life skills that you need to acquire in ECG. So this is the current provision um, in ECG in school. Again, many, many things there. Uh, school are, uh, have the autonomy to implement in terms of uh, the expertise and the resources that they have. So I won't say all is being done, but it's being done at different levels in different schools. I'm giving you the example um, in a typical secondary school because you're going to your child is going to transit to secondary school. And later on, I'll share a specific example of primary school because your child is still in primary school. So in secondary school, typically you have work attachment programs, usually for the older kids in set three, set four. Uh, there are also career seminars or organized visit to industry to gain the awareness of what is the world out there. And definitely with the school counselors in every school, some students may choose to uh, talk to the counsellor about future life goals. How do you problem solve? How do you uh, even negotiate with the parents when there are competing expect expectations and differing aspirations? So that could be a counselling uh, uh, route as well. And of course, there are lessons to inform uh, about the pathways as well as uh, career opportunities out there. In recent years, we have also launched the ECG portal. And I believe my colleague during the tea break will be able to uh, demo the capabilities of the ECG portal. So this portal will be another resource um, in uh, guiding students uh, through different modules. I'll just quickly click through the modules. These are in secondary school, will probably be relevant to you uh, further down the road. And the green box is basically to assure you that schools have put in resources in terms of key personnel like a head of department, as well as a career gui guidance coordinator to oversee the program. But more importantly, there are also form teachers and counsellors who can do the one-on-one -on -one, uh, guidance uh, for, your, for your child. Okay, but some of you may ask that, you know, isn't it a bit too early to talk about uh, careers for young people? In fact, on the contrary, the research say otherwise, that it is a good time to start sometime, you know, in, uh, when the child is 11 or 12 years old. And if you look back at our own careers, don't we have that fantasy jobs that we hold? Okay, the audience is too big here for me to poll you know, some of the responses. What are your fantasy jobs? But in my own experience, my younger child, when, when, when he was young, he liked to play with aeroplanes, Legos, uh, robotics, and so on. So there's a little bit of that technical side that he likes. He likes to toy with things. And of course, Every air show, he will say, Daddy, Daddy, let's go to the air show. And so we have been to the air show. And then every year, he will ask me to go to the air show at Paliba Air Base and say, haven't we done that last year? Then again, another year, another year, another year. He's already 19 years old, and lo and behold, after the O-level results, he asked to study aerospace engineering. So you say it's fantasy job, you know. It's, it's a bit too young to talk to a child about future career. But if I just look at my own younger boy, at a very young age, I can see that inclination about fan the, 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 the uh, fantasy with uh, planes and with machines and so on. And now he's pursuing a course in aerospace engineering. And I don't think that's even done. It's still very tentative because he's, also, he's still toying other ideas as well. What's next after poly? Uh, what, what, what can I do next? So I think get used to the idea that it's not too young to start. It's in fact good to start because that provides a lot of motivation that can drive and can pull the child through the education system and to prevent uh, distractions or even early dropouts. So I thought that is uh, useful to share. But specifically uh, for primary school, these are the emphasis, um, career awareness. Where do our young people get information about careers? Movies, look at the movie stars, TVs, magazines, newspapers, if our young people are reading enough. 
Okay? My fear is that they are not reading enough. But often they're not, they tend to be fixated on the, com on the most common and, you know, and, the, and the most favorite. And you will know doctors, lawyers, engineers. And there are many uh, students who have done well and who have gone into those vocations and said that actually I, I really didn't want to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, to be engineers. Especially engineers, there are a lot of uh, leakages and all they are trained as engineers but never doing engineering work. Um, they could also be getting the information basically from you. Could be biased, could be quite narrow. So I think um, our job is to try to expand the horizon, to just broaden it a little bit and not allow uh, primary school children to narrow their options too early. And I don't want to belabor the point about self-awareness. It's so important to know how each child is wired. Each of your children, you have more than one, will be different. You may have two children, they will be very different and unique. And you need to help them gain that self-awareness in terms of what they like and do not like and what they want to do and do not want to do. And of course, uh, part of it is to explore the educational uh, pathways and um, I would go uh, into that quite a fair bit later on. So I mentioned that there is an ECG portal. Um, again, a big diagram here, but I just want you to focus on three key questions that we want to ask our child. Who am I? Where am I going? And how do I actually get there? Right? And the yellow boxes, the words in details would uh, give you further information. For example, where am I going? The portal will provide at least uh, 300 occupations, just to expand beyond what is the most common that I talk about, or what they see in the movies. Uh, and how to get there, you must understand the corresponding educational pathways that can lead to some of these uh, tentative career choices. Okay, this is just to highlight that even for the secondary school and the pre-U portal, the design of it still cater to answering the three questions. Who am I? Where am I going? And how do I get there? If you will notice that the number of occupations has doubled. There are 600 there. More details because students at their age can process a bit more information. And the education database has also been expanded to give information on the ITEs, on the polys, the JCs, and also uh, hyperlinks to the private education institutions. And that is an option because I talk about the need for uh, continuing education. And one option would be the private education institution. Right? And there are hyperlinks to guide parents and students to those information. Okay, so I've given you what the schools um, have attempted to do. And definitely, if you look at um, the support system surrounding children, uh, form teachers would be one of them. Right, and they do look at the form teachers. Some will take the options of talking to school counsellors as well. But studies have shown that nothing beats having their own parents taking this journey together with them. And that is a quotation to make that point. Okay? No one come close. You will be the closest and in fact you will be the best person to know your child's strength, the interests, the learning needs and what would be the best school that can fit the needs, okay? And not just the school that everybody compete for. So the last segment really is to talk about some of the practical suggestions that I can offer you. Um, and I also speak from you know, my own experience of helping my own uh, teenage uh, child navigate through the whole education system. And I thought this would be useful. Um, four key points there, and I'll take you through the four points. First, I think it's very important to get involved uh, you are already involved. The fact that you are seated here because you take an interest. Uh, I always say that for parents, seminar like this is always uh, those who are supposed to be here, but they are somewhere out there, you know. So we are always talking to the converted. You are already taking an interest, and that's very good. So you can be here. Um, I believe secondary schools um, conduct a lot of uh, briefing uh, during this time. Uh, there could be some that are still conducting briefing. Do be aware of the schools around your neighborhood, near and far, and uh, make effort to attend uh, yourself or together with your child. And then be aware of the application and admission process. For example, Mr. Ong highlighted the DSA. It could be uh, closing uh, the admission procedures very soon, so you may want to uh, make sure that you do quick follow-up if you are interested in that. So definitely getting involved is, is, is important. And the second part, I'm going to use the portal to just explain to you what are some of the concrete steps you can help to explore 
the choice of secondary school. And of course, I will also use a non-portal way just you know, to give the balance that not everything needs to be done uh, via uh, online. Okay. Uh, suffice to say that if we do this well, it does provide some sense uh, of direction for your child, some concrete goals to aim for, and it does motivate the child. So two key features, find your favourite schools and explore the school's function in the ECG portal. I'll use the first method. Okay, this method, if you enter the, the, the uh, ECG portal, you will see schools listed from A to Z. Depending on the choice of school, you click on one school, you will get the name of the school as well as some details. Okay, um, how to get there, the distance, what kind of programs they offer, what were the past year's um, PSLE aggregate scores um, that the schools um, meet students in. And the child can actually save the favourite schools so that they get a listing of uh, schools that they have navigated on. And they can even compare up to three schools. You know, just like how you go to a Singtel or a Starhub shop, you want to buy a handphone, you pick three models and you lay them side by side, you look at the specs. So this is, you know, we actually took the idea from there and said that let's lay out three schools and you know, look at the specs and help the parents and the students to compare the feature. So this is one way of doing it. The second way to do it is you could also have certain uh, criteria in mind. What are these criteria? Could be, a big one would be the PSLE aggregate. Probably by now you have a sense whether your child is in the 250s, the 240s, the 230s, the 210s and so on. Know that these are only tentative projection based on school-based result. So, but that gives you a, a, a rough sensing. So definitely PSLE uh, potential, potential aggregate will be one way to key in. You can key in CCA. For example, your child is very interested in soccer. You will die if the school do not offer soccer as a CCA. That, that may be a criteria that you want to pick. Or it could be the performing arts. They are very interested in music and you must have a music program that can harness that talent. So that becomes a key criteria for you. It could be the niche program. I think Mr. Ong talked about the, the languages, the, the different uh, special programs that schools offer, um, the niche area in sports, in performing arts, in certain uh, learning platforms. Uh, distance could be an issue as well. Uh, you may not want to uh, look at a school that uh, the child has to spend 45 minutes an hour traveling. Um, it could also impact on your parents' involvement as well. I think there's a lot of benefit in having a school that's nearby because you can be so plugged into you know, school activities and take an interest in the school events and uh, when your child sees that you are deeply interested in the school and, and proud of the school, I think that can do a lot uh, as well. And you, of course, you know, the flip side is you also have to balance you know, that you are not always in the school in the sense of hawking over your child and that will not do for teenagers. So I think distance uh, is a criteria. Subject offers will be, there are some schools that offer subjects that are in a very applied way. Uh, there could be one or two schools that even offer econs at O level. So you know, be, be aware of some of these criteria. Some of the parents may like to have a school that's affiliated to the primary school because you like the culture, the ethos, you have a strong tradition, especially the faith-based school, and you want to continue that, and that become a criteria as well. So I think enough is said. It could also be mixed gender, single gender. Uh, I have two boys. My first one, very clear cut, I chose a mixed gender. He's a very shy boy from young. So I thought that you know, being in a mixed gender school will help uh, him uh, to uh, build up his social skills. And I thought in a, in a male, in a, in a single gender school, uh, he would uh, maybe a bit too rowdy for him. I mean, that, that's really from a very... Very uh, um, from a parent's anger, you know, and each one of you will probably have your consideration. And my second one was very clear cut because he told me it must be a single, it must be a boy school. I don't want to have girls, and it must have, it must be a sporting culture. It cannot be a nerdy school. And it was very clear cut. So I think the point I'm making is that each one is different. It could be a mixed gender, even a single gender school. That could be a criteria for you as well. The important thing is to have that conversation with your child. Okay, he or she is going to spend four or five years in a secondary school. If he or she is not comfortable in that school, it makes learning that much difficult. So, must have that conversation with your child. So, click the criteria and then click on the results and bingo, you get a list of schools. If you find that you don't get a list of school, then probably it is, you, have, uh, you have chosen a very creamy set of criteria. So, you may just want to tweak it a little bit. You know, 
and then you will see a different permutation. So this is another method quite useful. And again, the last part is you can always compare the three schools. So I'm going to show you some slides about comparison. So you pick three schools, you lay them out, and you can actually compare. Okay? The PSLE scores for the express streams, the NA and NT, will also tell you the certain profile uh, of, the, um, of, the, of the school, and then the subject offered, um, and also special programs. And of course, you can also compare the distances for the three schools. That's the portal way, but I think to be fair, there are also non-portal ways, and MOE has uh, done that by providing a booklet to all primary six parents. In that booklet, again, you have got many, many details of the secondary schools and the programs that they offer. So that's one way. The other way, Mr. Ong mentioned, go to the school website. The school website has been updated regularly by individual schools, and you can get some information there. But I think nothing beats taking the child to open houses and being there to see the school environment, talk to the school leaders, talk to the, um, talk to the uh, teachers and, uh, and uh, so on. And if you have specific questions, that's where you have your questions answered. So I gave you a few non-portal ways and, um, for you to also um, explore uh, how you can guide your child. Okay? The last part I want to talk about, you know, even if you are in the school, what kind of questions you can ask um, the school personnel. And also these are the questions that you can go over with a child as well. So let's look at some of the questions. Okay, number one, learning style. Okay, if you listen to Mr. Ong, there are so many different school types and learning pathways. And you really need to know which one will help your child thrive and be able to be give the best, uh, um, the, the, the best development for that talent. So learning style will um, definitely be one consideration and the different school types that can harness your child's strength and interest. So for example, if your child is already very uh, clearly talented in sports uh, and in the arts, uh, you must be aware that there is a Singapore sports school and there is a school of the arts that can harness that and take that to a very uh, deep level. And if your child is already very clear-cut talents in the maths and science, there is again an NUS high school for maths and science. There's another school that's called the School of Science and Technology um, that can you know, look at how to leverage on the use of ICT in teaching and learning. So different school types. And then within the mainstream schools, again, the niche program will uh, be another factor of consideration. So you need to be aware of that. Okay. You also want to be aware of some of the academic strengths of um, your child. Um, it could be the, in the languages, and that's where Mr. Ong talked about, you know, uh, taking the language learning at a higher level. It could be higher mother tongue. It could also be um, the uh, Malay special programs or the Chinese special program or the bicultural studies that are learning language and culture at a deep level. It could also be the arts elective programs and the music elective programs that have... Uh, very specialized programs to harness the musical and the artistic talent of our students. And only certain schools are offering this. So once you know that this is the academic strength of your child, you will need to zoom into those schools and ask those targeted questions. And definitely in the schools, if let's say there are some learning needs that your child may have, you may also ask specifically that you know, if my child is having some of these learning needs, how um, what are some of the programs in the school that can best support the uh, academic, social, emotional aspects as well? Okay, so those are some of the questions. Um, it is very important to talk about goals, uh, to talk about dreams, but I think you know, um, not much point if all the dreams and the aspirations are just you know, up in the head, but you have to really put it down. Okay, so this is about helping your child to set goals. And I've just given you a simple template. It's in the handout. Okay, this may work for you. You may have something more, even more sophisticated. But I think the, the two points I want to highlight is probably point four and point five. Point four, make sure the goals are in bite size. If you have a goal that is you know, a bit of a stretch, then in, in the, instead of motivating your child, you may end up be very dampening uh, if it is a goal that is not easily achievable. So try to make it bite size, and then when there are successes, celebrate those small successes, and that can motivate a lot. And then point number five, 
um, is the point that I make about being adaptable and being flexible. Always have plan A, plan B, and plan C. I always get very worried my, when parents or when students told me that they actually, in the whole six years in primary school, all they're gunning for is that one particular school. And if you're not able to get into that school, your whole world will collapse, and that is very dangerous. Okay, so I think this is the idea that there must always be plan A, there must always be plan B, there must always be plan C. And my own takeaway from Mr. Ong's uh, presentation is that there's a lot of flexibility, there's a lot of choices. Some, child, some, some students may take you know, the, uh, a longer time. Uh, some may even have to go through the hard knocks of life and you know, come out and work in, future, you know, in the near, near future for one or two years and then take some night courses and be able to get back to poly studies and even be able to... Um, uh, benefit from university study. The point that I'm making is that do not think that there's only one track. Of course, in the past, the education system is a lot simpler. You have a, we, we understand it to be a 642 system. Six years of primary school, four years of secondary school, two years of JC. You made it, well and good. You don't made it, you exit the system. But I think that's all changed. If you look at the presentation, a lot of information, but at least for today, uh, what we could achieve is at least at the awareness level and where to look for those information when you need those information, right? So be aware that if you are guiding from your own past experience, because I've been through the 642 system and therefore you must do that, I think that's a little bit uh, not well informed. And so we really need to change as well, right? We need to shift mindset about um, there are some values in uh, taking the longer journey, giving a bit more time, uh, eventually as long as the child stay motivated and stay long enough in school to harness uh, all the learning experiences and the different uh, programs, they will get there, okay? And understanding it in their terms rather than from our own past experiences. So I got very worried when uh, parents advise uh, based on past experiences and are not updated on, on, on what is the latest. Lots of information, uh, some of it you can probably refer to the handouts and also to the resources that has been given to you in the goodie bag. And I just want to quickly point to two. The one on the right is a brochure on the ECG portal. Many questions are asked about uh, do parents have access to the portal. Yes, you do. You don't have a separate account, but basically you use your child's account. Just log in the NRIC number and then you can access the portal with a password. You forget the password, you click it there will be a new password generated. You can ask your child about this and you'll be able to sort out and get into the portal uh, quickly. And the brochure will give you some information about the feature and uh, which are the ones that you want to zoom in and to use. The one on the left on the slides is a bookmark that you have. It's like a giant size bookmark and you talk about how do you find the right fit. Okay, the right fit for your child like I said, it's not the school that everybody compete for. That must be the school for him or her. Okay? It is the school that can fit his learning style and that can harness his academic strength and also his interest and passion. Okay, so there are many hyperlinks there. Those are useful, but they are dynamic. So it will change, right? The hyperlinks may be broken over time. So know, um, know where to look for the information. They are all in the MOE website. And if information... Uh, there are new inf information, I'm sure the new uh, information will be put up at those hyperlinks as well. And on that note, I want to thank you for your attention.